religious beliefs or lack of belief, you are welcome here. No matter your age, sex, sexual orientation or gender identity, you are welcome here. No importa tu ciudadanía, tu estás bienvenido aquí. No matter your citizenship, politics, or relationship status. No matter your physical characteristics or health, you are welcome here. Whoever you are, wherever you are from, you are welcome in this place. Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Montgomery online worship for October 4th, 2020. My name is Lynn Hopkins. It is my honor to serve this congregation as its minister and I'd like to invite you into this hour of worship this morning with a musical chalice lighting piece, words written by the Reverend Rebecca Parker, a former president of Star King School for the Ministry. And uh, the musical setting is composed by Elizabeth Norton. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now I'd like to invite those who are inclined to join with me in speaking our congregational covenant. We, the members and friends of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Montgomery, promise to serve our community with open minds, willing hearts, and helping hands as we respect one another, honoring that our perceptions may differ, value our differences, working to better understand them in conflict, give joyfully of ourselves being in harmony with our capabilities and embrace our connections with each other, nature, the global community, and the great mystery of life. And now we will hear from our coordinator of religious education, Roger Burdett, with a time for all ages. Hi, welcome to time for all ages. Well, I thought I would do something a little bit different today and come back into our fellowship. I miss the normalcy of coming back in here and meeting with you, so this is probably the best we can do for now. And the rabbit, every time I come in here, the little bunny sits there on the front pew, just waiting patiently, so I thought I would bring him or her on in here. But today's time for all ages if you can believe it, is inspired by Google. Google has these things called Google Doodles. In fact, if you go to Google right now, you'll probably see some sort of a piece of art above their search engine line. Click it, and there's some sort of information that Google will provide. Recently, they provided information about a Mexican-American woman named Jovita Idar, whom I had never heard of, and I was inspired. So today we're going to learn about Jovita Idar. My sources for this time for all ages are Google, their information that they provided. The New York Times has an article called Overlooked No More, Jovita Idar, who promoted rights of Mexican Americans and women. And from PBS.org, they have a really great series called American Masters, and if you'll look, you'll find a series called Unsung Women Who Changed America. Most of the really excellent video that I got for today's presentation comes from PBS Org. So this is the picture that first caught my eye above the Google search line. We see a woman standing in front of a sign that says El Progreso, and then three guys on horseback looking at her. I see some newspaper or something on the ground around her. Well, what's that about? What I will focus on today is one incident for which she's famous, but I encourage you to watch her video on pbs.org to learn more. Throughout her life, Javita Idar was a teacher, a nurse, an editor, a writer, and an activist. She grew up in a middle-class Mexican-American family her father was quite the feminist for his day. He encouraged his daughter to be politically active and intellectually active, and she was. According to the PBS video, she was always on the front lines of change. The video also said that she used her voice to encourage women to be politically involved within the American system. But here is the incident for which she seems to be most famous. In 1914, during the Mexican Revolution south of the American border, the United States had been ordered to send troops to the border. Javita opposed that American intervention, and she said so, in an editorial in the El Progreso, the newspaper that she ran at the time. Well, some folks in very high places did not like the fact that a newspaper, possibly a woman, possibly a Mexican-American newspaper, were critical. So they sent the Texas Rangers to tell Javita to cease and desist. Here's what she's famous for. She stared them down. She stood up to the Texas Rangers. The Texas Rangers at the time had a reputation for shooting first 
and asking questions later. But Havita stood her ground, faced them down and said, listen, you're not going to infringe on our American First Amendment rights. Well, the Texas Rangers left that day. The next day they came back when Havita was not there and they tore down and destroyed her press. But she is well known for that one incident. She did lots of other things in her life to stand up for the rights of Mexican-American children whose education was not on par with those of white American children. She stood up for the rights of women. She did a lot in her lifetime. And I encourage you to go learn more. A great source is that video by pbs.org. Stay strong. Take really great care of yourself. Stay in touch with people the best that you can. We humans need that connection. And I wish you a really great week. It is a regular practice of this congregation to take a moment to join in offering lifting up and letting go the things that we carry in our hearts through the week. I know it's been a pretty crazy week out there in the world, and uh, I know it's been challenging for many of us in our own lives. So I invite you to take this time. We'll have music for about two minutes uh, and offer up the things that you are carrying this morning the joys as well as the concerns in our chat box adjacent to the video uh, so that we can grow closer and know each other more deeply in community. Spirit of life the stirrings of compassion flow with the wind rise in the sea move in my hands giving life a shape So I'm excited about today. I've had to put it off for a couple of weeks because of madness all around. Um, but I finally get to have this public membership ceremony. We've had a few folks join this year, even under these conditions. Uh, even though that we, we cannot physically come together to sign the book, as is usually the practice to join the congregation. So we did it by email this year. Uh, and I have asked all of our new members, including one joining today, uh, to introduce themselves to you now. Hello everyone, I'm Aaron Madden. I have been in the Greater Montgomery area since 1985. I just wanna say it's a great world. I want to be around people. I want to help people and help out humanity. Yeah. My name is Alicia Dennis. And this is Charlie Robinson. I love cake. Well, I love, love, love frosting. So I love cake as the vehicle for frosting. 
Hi, I'm Todd Robinson. Uh, coffee is my religion, but since we don't have a church for that here in Montgomery, I decided that UU was probably the next best thing. Simone Thomas, UUFM was the first on our list of churches to visit when we moved to Montgomery, and we just never made it past number one. I'm Sam Diamond, and I will never admit how many takes were deleted before this one. We are building a new way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way, feeling stronger every day. We are building a new way. I would like to offer these words, which I dearly love. I've used them before, but it's been a few years. The words are written by Dana Worsnop, and it's about what Unitarian Universalist community looks and feels like. Often people say they love coming to a place with so many like-minded people. I know just what they're getting at, and I know that they aren't getting it quite right. I don't want to be with a bunch of people who think just like me. I want to be in a beloved community where I don't have to think like everyone else to be loved, to be eligible, to belong. I want to be with people who value compassion, justice, love, and truth though they have different thoughts and opinions about all sorts of things. 
I want to be with people who have many names and no name at all for God. I want to be with people who see in me goodness and dignity, but who also see my failings and foibles and who still love me. I want to be with people who feel their interconnection with all existence and let it guide their footfalls on earth. I want to be with people who see life as a paradox and who don't always rush to resolve it. I want to be with people who are willing to walk the tightrope that is life and who will hold my hand as I walk mine. I want to be with people who let their faith call them into a different way of being in the world. I want to be with people who inspire one another to follow the call of the Spirit. I want to be with people who covenant to be honest, engaged, and kind, who strive to keep their promises and hold me to the promises I make. I want to be with people who know that human community is often warm and generous, sometimes challenging, and almost always a grand adventure. In short, I want to be with people like you. And so today, we welcome into our community these new members who have chosen to make a free and voluntary commitment to this congregation. New members, we're so glad to have you here and so glad that you have chosen this community of fellow seekers to be your religious home. Will you accept our gifts of fellowship, inquiry, and service as you offer us your own unique gifts? Will you add your name to the long history of Unitarian Universalists who spread hope with our living faith? Will you engage with us as we seek to create a community and a world dedicated to love and justice? Will you commit to help in creating the future of our congregation, supporting others, and being supported in return? If you now join us in this lifelong journey, please say, I will. I will. And now I want to offer a few more words by Liz James. Today we recognize and celebrate your membership. This is a moment of excitement and possibility. I need to talk to you about a moment in your future. There will come a time when we are not a community of excitement and possibility that feels like your true home. There will come a moment when you do not fit, we will disappoint you. Memorize the feelings you have in this moment because you will need them months from now or years from now. You will need them in that broken-hearted moment to come when you realize that we, together, are not all that you thought we were. You will not fit. If every one of us fit, we would not be called to grow. This faith is not a thing you join. It is a thing you are called to co-create. So prepare now for when we break one another's hearts. Know what will carry you through that and who will carry you through that. Be ready. Hold on to this moment and this memory for that time in the future when you are ready to turn away. Your moment of remembership will be one of the most precious parts of your journey as a Unitarian Universalist. So today, plant the seeds in your heart that will prepare you for it. Amen. Unidos en el misterio de la hora, unidos ya en un gran cuerpo, unidos ya en la lucha triunfadora, Espíritu de Gather here in the midst. 
mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn near. Unidos en el misterio de la hora, unidos ya en el misterio de la hora, unidos ya en la lucha que aún adora, Okay, I'm going to try to keep it short, but there are some things I need to say today. The president is in the hospital with potentially life-threatening illness. Um, and you may have feelings about that. Look, let's back up. When we began with this novel coronavirus In order to survive and protect those we love, we endure months of suffering, isolation, and fear, and loss. Today, we see 210,000 American lives ended as a result of this disease. Most of us are old enough to remember 9-11, 2001. Our, our collective response to the 9-11 attacks was a, a sense of communal grief and outrage. If there had been a recurrence of the 9-11 attacks and an equal number of Americans had been killed every 100 days since then, every 100 days for the last 19 years, we still would not have lost as many as we have in the last six months to this virus. Our nation had about a two month head start in preparation and yet our rate of infection is more than three times that of Europe. We are losing about a thousand American lives every day. And in many places in this country, the rate of infection is rising faster than it has at any point before in this pandemic. We seem to not have a handle on it. Meanwhile, our supposed leader shows contempt for the lives of those he has sworn to protect, for our lives. And he openly encourages the behavior that deepens and extends the suffering. This isn't political. This is public health. We're dying. The scenario has grown and intensified over the last six months. And the more information you get, the more detail the more egregious his offense seems. The more painful the situation, the more we need someone to blame. And now, on Thursday, we hear 
he's sick. Some of us are going to have a moment of delight in that. See, emotions arise from your brain stem. As they become feelings, as we attach meaning to these physical sensations, we might recognize our momentary sense of celebration at what feels like at long last some tiny bit, just a speck of justice in this enormously unjust circumstance. And if you find that, it may trigger a sense of guilt or remorse at taking delight in another's fortune, misfortune. No worries. Feelings you have, as long as they are just feelings, are only affecting you. My feelings only affect me. It's natural to feel discomfort, shame, even horror at what seems like wishing another person to suffer because we affirm the inherent worth of every single person. It's a feeling. You'll have them. I hope so. Anyway, I have them all the time. It's part of being human. You didn't cause his suffering or anyone else's for this, for that matter, in this COVID nightmare. Of course not. If you are someone who relishes this moment of diagnosis or who enjoys thinking of him for just a second in pain and confinement, I understand. I'm not celebrating those feelings. I'm not congratulating you or me about those feelings. But here's the thing I need you to remember. Feelings are not actions. And emotions are, in fact, pre-conscious brainstem electrochemical reactions to stimuli. I might not celebrate it, but I'm damn sure not going to shame anyone for electrochemical brainstem reaction to stimuli. And while it may or may not be appropriate for you to give voice to those feelings and thoughts associated with that emotion in whatever company you are in, in the moment, I want you to remember one more thing. Fantasizing vengeance on an abuser can be harmful to your spirit when it becomes a preoccupation. But I have never begrudged a wounded person that moment of indulgence in a little fantasy, a fantasy of justice, of the world making itself more balanced and stable and fair and well. So acknowledge the feeling, if you have it. Acknowledge it for what it is, a part of the human experience, a response to terrible violence and trauma, to an atrocity committed against all American people, especially those most vulnerable, the feeling is a perfectly normal and natural response. I pray that all of us may reach the point of forgiveness and reconciliation and compassion for all of the misguided individuals who took us down the path of governance by psychopathy. But until then, let us be together in all of our different ways, accept one another in all of our different viewpoints 
and love one another into a brighter day together. May it be so. Amen. Love, would you guide my feet? Love, would you light my path? Love, lead the way. Love, will you fill my needs? Love, will you do the math? Love, lead the way. Lead the way. Lead the way. And I will walk with trust today. In all I do, in all I say, I will follow. Love, lead the way. When I don't know what I'm doing, when nothing feels okay, love, lead the way. When everything feels broken and I'm holding fear at bay, love lead the way. Lead the way, lead the way, lead the way, lead the way, and I will walk, and I will walk. With trust today, with trust today, in all I do, all I do, in all I say, in all I say, I will follow, I will follow, love lead the way. So I'm going to do that chorus again. If you feel inclined, maybe you want to clap. Lead the way, lead the way, lead the way, lead the way. And I will walk, and I will walk with trust today. Help me to walk with trust today. In all I do, in everything I do, in all I say, all I say, I will follow. I, 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 I will love lead the way. Love lead the way. Love lead the way. Join us for second hour. Hop over to Zoom. Our discussion will begin at 11 o'clock. Uh, we start with some light social time and then we'll take a moment to explore today's topic a little bit. And on Wednesday evening, you, you, and you will begin exploring the seven principles in detail. Uh, uh, that's at 6.30 on Wednesday night, also on Zoom. Both of those links are on our front page. Don't forget, we got a lot of other stuff going on during the week. Check out the front page of our website. You can get to the calendar on our website as well. I hope you will join us over at Second Hour. And until then, our service has ended. May our service begin. Thank you. Think about 
about what you're trying to do to me. Come on, think. Let your mind go and let yourself be free. Come on now, think. I think about what you're trying to do to me. Come on, think, think, think. Let your mind go and let yourself be free. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go way on way back when. I didn't even know you. I could have been too much more than ten. I ain't no psychiatrist, I ain't no doctor with a degree. Don't take too much IQ to see what you're doing to me. You gotta think. I think about what you're trying to do to me. Come on now, think. I let your mind go and let yourself be free. Go walking around every day, taking names to keep in score. You're trying to make other people lose their mind. Be careful, you don't lose yours. You gotta think. I think about what you're trying to do to me. Come on now, pain. Leave my go and let yourself be free. I said freedom, your oh, freedom, freedom. We all want freedom. Everybody wants freedom. I'm singing about freedom. Come on, sweet freedom. Come on, get you some freedom. You need me, I need you. Without each other, there ain't nothing either can do. We got to think. I think about what you're trying to do to me. Come on now, think, think, think. Let your mind go and let yourself be free. One more time, let's say freedom. 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 Hey, hey, freedom. Freedom. Everybody wants, everybody needs, come on, give us some. Hey, ba 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 na na. This is the part where everybody, bing, bing, you know, that thing. Not today, next time.